everybody's spurge. Uh, getting frustrated with leaders is certainly nothing uh, new. Uh, probably one of the most classic common complaints of, of anywhere. Like uh, you go to any company, any corporation, and you ask like, how's your boss? I mean, there's, there's entire shows about the stupid boss, frustrating boss, the boss that doesn't do anything, the boss takes credit for all your work. I mean, there, there's an immense amount of material on that. Um, and I, I'm going to completely admit to you, it gets in my head. Uh, so when I have reports, I, I often, and a lot earlier in my career, would make mistakes the opposite direction, where I'm like, gosh, oh, I don't want to be one of those bosses, so I'm going to overshare. And the reality is, if you get any kind of management position, you quickly realize that, you know, there's reasons HR is in that room sometimes. There's reason why legal will tell you not to put it down on paper. I mean, there's, there's you know, tangible, real reasons why you shouldn't overshare. And this is, uh, it's, it's one of those hard arts to kind of balance between this because, you know, the second you stop being super transparent about things, often for good financial or legal reasons, you know, your employees are like, well, this jackass doesn't do anything. And it's just like, you know, they're wrong, but you're, you're sitting there going, oh, shit, I can't say anything. So anyway, it's a dynamic. When you talk about the, uh, the management at comic companies, it's easy to point the finger and go, what in the world is going on there? Particularly when you see decisions that are really, really foolish or when you see creators on Twitter talking about not getting answers to, you know, projects that they pitched like a year ago or, you know, any number of things. Uh, there's a lot of question marks about, hey, what is leadership doing? And so I started off this way by kind of acknowledging the fact that there's a lot of stuff that goes on in leadership that we don't know. And, you know, you, you can't, you can't, you know, assume that you're privy to every single decision, every single moment. There be, there could be perfectly good reasons why people aren't getting back to other people and things are set, you know, perfectly good reasons. You know, one of the things that I mentioned a long time ago in a previous video is uh, an editor told a creator that the comic books the creator worked on sold, you know, like, Four million, you know, dollars worth of copies, which anybody with a calculator knows was complete and absolute bullshit. And, uh, you know, and, but, and the editor who said that should be fired. It's also possible the creator was insane, you know, could go either way, but regardless, you know, th there's plenty of things that go on all the time. And sometimes even an investigation of things takes a long time. I mean, there's, there's lots of reasons things play out the way they do. Now, all of that said, Let's read this mail about leadership and top-down responsibility because I think it hits on a lot of accurate points. So it's Perch, hey there. In your recent video about the execution of story plots, character designs, etc., there are a group decision at Marvel Comics and DC Comics and that these decisions are top-down decisions. Yes, in many cases they are. Why then, goes the letter maker, a writer, with Marvel and DC Comics, we constantly see the writer or artist get the blame or take the hit for the angry reaction from the fandom. Or even worse, a writer who or artist gleefully spews toxicity back at the fandom. For example, the Miles Morales What If issue, the writer took the hit and then was uh, and then refused his pay back from Marvel. If Mar this Miles Morales was a pitch that the by the editor and probably approved by CB Sobolski, why didn't the editor take the hint? Why didn't C.B. Sobolski publicly tell the fandom not to attack the writer and then apologize for that issue? In other words, goes the mail, it seems like the editorial staff and leadership of Marvel Comics and DC Comics are gutless cowards who have no problem spewing shit behind the scenes, but then never want to take any responsibility for the shit they've created. I would say that Disney and WB Discovery are also gutless cowards because they never publicly react to the shit that's happening at Marvel Comics and DC Comics. Okay, on that one real quick before we finish up the mail. Um, I agree with the first half, I don't agree with the second. Meaning, a giant corporation who's managing a business unit or an arm, um, you know, running out and doing a public statement is hugely problematic. And I don't mean problematic in the Twitter way. I mean, if you go out there and you say, hey, you dumbasses, and you do that in a really public spanking kind of way, it feels good to the fandom. It also uh, opens you up to, you know, lawsuits. In some cases, it violates employment agreements. There's a million reasons, and uh, that million is usually counted in dollars, why uh, companies can't just go on the warpath against dumbasses in their company. Uh, it's, it, it's satisfying to see it. I totally agree, but there's reasons why they should. Uh, Elon going uh, on the rampage against various people at Twitter is amazing for people who are not in Twitter and watching this uh, shit show go down. It's pretty fun to watch. 
But uh, from an opening yourself up to liability and, and lawsuits, it's dumb as hell. And I mean, he's keeping his, he's keeping his lawyer busy. I guess I'll just leave it at that. Um, anyway, we're going to get to the rest of this battle. Let me finish it up here. It says, Urch, you commented the comic book industry is going through significant changes that things might get better down the road. Yeah, I think inevitably they will be because, you know, logically, just, you know, based on the math of the odds, it will. When the editorial staff and leadership at comic book companies are not taking the hit uh, for the shit that they're creating, how is the comic industry going to get better? Well, that's an easy answer, by, by taking the hit. And the, the ability for, you know, cop the leadership at companies not to take the hit is rapidly coming to an end. I'll explain more in a minute. It says, I'm personally tired of seeing all the pissing that's happening in the comic book industry. Thanks for all you do. Thank you for the mail. Um, so, look, um, first things first, you know, why do writers or creators take the hit? Well, first off, if you look at when people complain, if you look at when people take to Twitter to bitch about something that's in a comic, they don't, they, you know, the, the fans, the people who are upset, don't attack the editor. I wish they would. If there's one thing that I wish everybody would, uh, would, would kind of collectively do, and if this could go, yeah, so somebody send the message along to the Yellow Flashes, to the Nerdettes, to the uh, Zacks, to, to all different people to say, when something, to Wes, thinking critical, when something shitty in a comic, let's have a 30-day moratorium, this is my suggestion, on the writer and the, the, the artist. And instead, we're going to call out and say, this was a dumb decision by the editor and the leadership. And call the leadership out. Let's try that for 30 days. Now, and nothing is 100%. So definitely the writer wrote the story and you know, on and on and on and on. But I think anybody who's being honest to themselves would admit that when you see critique or criticism of a comic book, the writer gets 90% of that criticism. And I think if you're being honest with yourself, and, and even 90 is low, it's like 99% of the criticism. If the art sucks, then the artist is getting sure. But, but from a storyline perspective, look, take Brian Michael Bendis aging up John Kent. Do you think Bendis did that in a vacuum? Do you think he did it all on his own? Do you think you know he was able to just get that done and nobody else weighed in on that? Of course not. That decision went through multiple levels at DC. Several people. Editor, editor in chief, leadership. That hell, that one went by Jim Lee, guaranteed. So, uh, you know, I think it is time, well past time, that uh, we actually started, you know, holding those people accountable. So, I, you know, I, I don't think it's fair that the writer takes ninety five percent of the hit, where the writer maybe, you know, forty percent, fifty percent of the decision, sometimes less. In a lot of cases, editors are making the pitch. They're saying we want to. You know, we want, uh, you know, a writer to pitch us on Norman Osborne born as the Gold Goblin. That's what we want. So come on. And the Gold Goblin is going to do this and this and this. That's what's going on. That new Warriors comic that everybody shit on that. What who's it? Uh, Daniel Kibblesmith did. Daniel Kibblesmith was hired to write that comic based on a pitch from the editor. So, you know, should the editor, the editor should take that hit. So. Why Why does uh, the writer generally take the blame? Because that's where the attacks are lobbed. And if you're sitting there and suddenly people are shitting on you, you're going to punch back. Most people would punch back. And that's exactly what happens here. So basically, you know, the, the writer gets, uh, you know, shit on. And, you know, the writer starts defending themselves. And pretty soon it's a war between the fan and the writer. And the editor's like, well, I guess I'll just enjoy this popcorn. No sense for me to get involved. And that's what they do. They just back away. Call you know, but yeah, I'm not I'm not getting involved here. That's that's how it goes. Um, you know, I, I <laughs> that's unfair. The editor should be held accountable. But first things first is the fans need to uh, you know uh, to start aiming some of this ire uh, where it belongs. That's that's step number one. And then uh, step number two is, yeah, the editors need to grow a spine and actually defend some of their decisions. I think it's been a very, very convenient uh, scapegoat to just blame it on the writer. The writer is the public face of this thing. So, you know, we'll just, uh, I don't care if it's all the editor's idea. The editor's just going to fade into the shadows. Now, keep in mind, the writer is a freelancer and has more ability and control to say and do things on social media. The writer doesn't. If, uh, sorry, the editor, because the editor is a full-time employee. The editor has a lot less ability to do that. So what happens is, uh, in, in all this is that you see the, uh, the, 
you know, the editors basically hide behind this, like, uh, HR says I can't get on social media and start blabbing this shit out. I'm going to have to, I'll have to be like Heather Antos and complain about the patriarchy instead. But, uh, you know, if they're talking about my comic, well, you know, HR says I need to be quiet. So they, they're, they just stay quiet. They let all of that anger and that frustration, all that other stuff go toward the creator, the writer. So, you know, that, that has to change. I mean, quite full stop that, that has to change. And this is a case of, you know, Marie Javins, Ben Abernathy, C.B. Sobolski. Yeah, those guys in particular, specifically those people, need to basically stand up and say, you know what, um, I'm not going to let the creator take the hit on this one. I am going to, you know, actually say, you know, that was a joint decision. I had a part in that. So, you know, I, I, I stand here next to my brother. If you believed in the idea so much, stand by it. Uh, I, I think it's a failing of character. Uh, bluntly, I, again, as a full-time employee, it limits a little bit of what you do via HR rules and everything else, but you could still say, hey, look, in a nice way, I'll take the blame on this. This was my idea. Yeah. Yeah, you should do that. That absolutely is something you should do. Uh, the fact that they don't is, uh, you know, I mean, it, look, I, it, it, it kind of goes to this whole thing. If, if um, yeah, if if some willing patsy, in this case the uh, the writer, is willing to uh, take all the heat and the shit for a story idea, and you know, it, 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 quite frankly, it, it takes a very honorable person to stand up and go, you know, I'm not going to let this guy take all the hits. I was I was partly involved in that decision. So if you're going to attack him, anyway, that is the answer to your question. Um, I I think uh, people should take responsibility. I think not taking responsibility is gutless. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to say to it. So, you know, how can we, how can you as a comic fan, a, a critic, how can, how can we help? You know, just, just remember, you know, when you're doing that, that video about, uh, I don't know if I got Stephanie Phillips for the 800th time, you know, just remember that there was an editor sitting behind that, that hired Stephanie, gave Stephanie the idea, approved what Stephanie did. But there's put their name on it because their name is on the book. And uh, maybe it's not maybe it's not 95 percent Stephanie's fault. You know, there's there's other people involved. So there you go for what it's worth. Thanks for listening.